Shalom, family. This is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. And I want to speak to you on the topic. Bless and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. See, family, we have to realize that we have been put here in this wilderness because of disobedience. We have been put here in this wilderness because the Most High is gonna have to prove us to see if we are worthy to return in his kingdom. What a lot of us don't realize that the Most High God of Israel have hidden his face from us. He have hidden his understanding from us because of our disobedience. But it was only for a appointed time. He promised us even in his word that he wasn't going to hide his face from us, meaning his understanding from us forever that he will return that word to us, the ones of us that's obedient and have eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to understand. And that same word that he will send to us will resurrect us from out of deep sleep. It will resurrect us from being spiritually dead living 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 80 years following traditions of men, following doctrines of devils, following Jewish fables. He promised us that this word will come and wake us up and resurrect us up to the knowledge of the truth and he's telling us in his teaching, bless meaning given wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. So family, it's my prayer that someone would be richly edified during this teaching and gain something to help them along the way. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this teaching. And I pray that you would get something from it. So we're going to start at the book of Genesis, chapter 49, and we're just going to scroll down through the scriptures and, and allow him to speak to us. And it says in Jacob called unto his sons and said, gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel, your father. Now we know when he said hearken to Israel, your father, we know he's speaking about the most high. We know this who he's speaking of. This spirit is going to tell us what's going to befall us in the last days. He says, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might in the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power, unstable as water, Thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed. Then defiledest thou it. He went up to my couch. So we see what he's saying about Reuben, these characteristics of Reuben. Simeon and Levi are brethren, instruments of cruelty are in their habitations 
oh my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly, mine honor. Be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self will dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Now, I'm going to part right here for a minute because we have all of these different camps, Hebrew Israelite camps that support this fake 12 tribe chart. And they're going to tell you this tribe is from this location and this tribe is from that location. And then they're going to lie and tell you that Esau is the white man. These are all lies that can easily be debunked using precepts. Now, the Most High said he's going to divide Simeon and Levi in the whole house of Israel, in, the, in Jacob, he's going to scatter them in Israel. Because why? These brethren are instruments of cruelty. He's giving you the characteristics of the tribe of Simeon and Levi. You can just think of the bloods and the crypts. The Black Knights, all of these different gangs, you got some of these brothers that don't take no kind of mess. They're not doing no talking. Uh, it might even be a, a characteristic within your family. I know just about every family got some Simeon and Levi characteristics in it. But the Most High said these are brethren, instruments of cruelty are in their habitation. He's giving you the characteristics of what these tribes are about. They can be male or female, but he's talking about the tribes as a whole. So there's no way in the world you're going to put one tribe in one location because he say, I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. This is the doing of the Most High. Just like it's his doings when our father and our mother get together. And when they get together, nine and ten, one, ten months later, here we come out. And the Most High sitting there telling us he knew us before we came out of our mother's womb. So it was his doing how we was conceived. Just as Simeon and Levi can be scattered, you have one mother can spit out a different tribe and, and the most high will be the one that decides if that same mother that spit out Judah that can spit out Lim, uh, uh, Simeon or Levi, this is his doing. He said, I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. This is his doings, not ours. So it's no way in the world that one tribe can be in one location and only in that location. It's crazy. And we know that Esau and Jacob was brothers. They was twins. Their father was Isaac. There's no way in the world that they can be of the seed of Japheth. It's just common sense. Let's keep going. Verse 8, it says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey. My son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet 
until Shiloh come into who right it is, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. It's a lot of spiritual talking here. Binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass coat unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. Zubalin shall dwell at the haven of the sea and he shall be for an haven of ships and his border shall be unto Zadon. Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. Mm. And he saw the rest was good in the land that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulder to bear and became a servant unto tribute. Dan shall judge, meaning Dan shall teach his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way. In other words, Dan is gonna be one of those ones like a Leviathan, a serpent, a split tongue doctrine. He's gonna be teaching a little bit of truth mixed with false, falsities. He say, and Ada in the path that bited the horse's heels so that his rider shall fall backward. So his listener, the one that he's teaching, the one that Dan is teaching gonna fall backwards because of that split tone doctrine. That horse, that doctrine is gonna be a false doctrine. What Dan is about. He said, I have waited for thy salvation, O Spirit of God. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Out of Asher is bread, or uh, out of Asher, his bread shall be fat. His knowledge gonna be real fat. And he shall yield royal dainties. We know Asher is the one that build the city of Nineveh. So we know that this is where Jonah was told to go and preach, but that city was built by Asher. Naphtali is a hind let loose. He give it goodly words. Joseph is a fruitful bowl, even a fruitful bowl by a well whose branches run over the wall. Very knowledgeable. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him, but his bow abode in strength and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd the stone of Israel. So it's saying a lot right here. From dense is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. We know that's speaking about the spirit of God, Christ, where his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is going to reside in Joseph. He said, even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee, and by the almighty, who shall bless thee, he gonna give you wisdom with blessings of heaven above and blessings of the deep that lie it under, blessings of the breast and of the womb. This is all being assigned to Joseph, this fruitful bow, Joseph, verse 26. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be 
on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. So we see clearly Joseph was the one that was given all of this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Everyone wanted to be Judah for some reason. But we clearly see who all of the blessings went to. The wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding went to was Joseph. Verse 27, Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning, he shall devour the prey. And at night, he shall divide the spoil. All these are the 12 tribes of Israel. Remember when I spoke earlier, we wasn't speaking in particular to the one individual son, but those tribes, which those that come from each one of those sons. He's speaking about their characteristics and what is going to be following them in the last days. So all these are the tribes of Israel. And this is it that their father spake unto them and blessed them. Everyone, according to his blessing, he blessed them. He gave them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Everyone, according to their blessing, their portion. Let's get some more information. Sirach chapter 44 and verse 19. Abraham was a great father of many people. In glory was there none like unto him who kept the law of the Most High and was in covenant with him. He established the covenant in his flesh and when he was proved, he was found faithful. Therefore, he assured him by an oath that he would bless the nations in his seed. This is the same information that we just got through seeing in Genesis chapter 49. Each one of those sons represent a nation. In his 12 nations of Israel, meaning 12 tribes of Israel. And he's saying that he would bless the nations in his seed, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that he would multiply him as the dust of the earth and exalt his seed as the stars and cause them his seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to inherit from sea to sea and from the river unto the utmost part of the land. With Isaac did he establish likewise for Abraham, his father's sake, the blessing of all men of all of those nations in his seed of all of those 12 tribes and the covenant. You have to keep everything lined up, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and deal little. He said, and made it rest upon the head of Jacob. He acknowledged him in his blessing and gave him inheritance and divided his portions among the 12 tribes, among the 12 nations, among those 12 sons did he part them? So we see how everything is lining up. So among the 12 tribes, did he part them? Romans chapter 9. So we're going to see who the dim is. Key word is dim. Among the 12 tribes, did he part dim? So Romans chapter 9 and verse 4 who are Israelites to whom pertain at the adoption and the glory and the covenants. We just read about the covenants over in Sirach and the giving of the law 
in the service of God, in the promises, whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Christ came. We saw that in Genesis chapter 49, that the shepherd and the stone of Israel is given even unto Joseph. We saw that. He said, who is over all, Yahweh bless forever. Amen. Verse six, he says, not as though the word of God have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall I see be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Just because you come from the loins of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, that does not make us the children of God. He said, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed, the ones that's obeying his voice, the ones that's doing his work. See, we just proved that when we started out in Genesis chapter 49, because Israel, their father, clearly told those sons what was going to befall them in the last days, and we see a lot of them didn't turn out too good. We see Dan didn't turn out good. Reuben didn't turn out good. It's a lot of them was going to be doing things that wasn't pleasing in the eyesight of the Most High. He tells you that. Even a lot of Judah. So he said, that is they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of Yahweh, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. It's very important that we study this and meditate on this word. Don't get caught up living according to the flesh because we need to be living according to the spirit, according to the promise. See, he showed Moses all of this information and he clearly laid it out in Genesis chapter 49. So we're going to go to second address 14, one through nine. It says, and it came to pass upon the third day, I sat under an oak and behold, there came a voice out of a bush over against me and said, Edris, Edris. And I said, here am I, creator, and I stood up upon my feet. Then said he unto me in the bush, I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses and talk with him when my people were served in Egypt, meaning in bondage in the house of confusion. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt and brought him up to the mount of where I held him by me a long season and told him many wondrous things and showed him the secrets of the times and the end and commanded him saying, these words shall thou declare Indeed, shall I hide. And now I say unto thee that thou lay up in thine heart, thy heart, the signs that I have showed, and the dreams that thou hast seen, and the interpretations which thou hast heard. For thou shalt be taken away from all, and from henceforth. Thou shall remain with my son, meaning thou shall remain with my servant, Christ, and with such as be like thee until the times be ended. So family, what he's telling Adris or Edris, 
He said, for thou shall be taken away from all. You're going to be taken out of this wilderness. You're going to be resurrected from the dead. You're going to be redeemed out of these prison houses known as churches. For thou shall be taken away from all, and from henceforth thou shall remain with my son, with my servant, which is Christ, the spirit of God, the word of truth, and with such as be like thee until the times be ended. So family, not only he's talking to Edris, he's speaking to you and I. See, we in this wilderness, we in Babylon, this whole earth, this whole world from sea to sea is Babylon right now. When this truth come and fire you, this truth come and purge you and redeem you and convert you, thou shall be taken away from all. And from henceforth, thou shall remain with my son, my servant, which is Christ, and with such as be like thee until the times be ended. Let's get some more information. Revelations chapter 20 in verse 6. He said, blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection as this truth coming down as a fierce man of war redeeming his people, the ones who have eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to understand. See, family, the time is now to really, really, really get in your word and study. See, a lot of you may not know that he have instructions on how to study his Bible and how to understand his word. If you don't know him, I'm going to give you the scriptures and you write this down. You meditate on it. Isaiah 28, verse 9 and 10. Psalms 119, verse 4 and 104. Isaiah 34 and verse 16. In that order, you take and you study it, you meditate on it, you pray to the most high God of Israel, Yahweh, and you ask him to show you, to lead you in the right direction so you can get guidance and understand and learn how to understand his word and his one doctrine. You ask him to give you a servant, someone that will teach you and feed you with knowledge and understanding. The time is winding up, friends. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know what next week is going to bring. We don't know what next month is going to bring. We don't know what next year is going to bring. Bless and holy, meaning given wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. Waking up from deep sleep to this truth. He say on such, the second death have no power. But they shall be priests of Yahweh and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. 
Family, this is taking place right now as we speak. According to the scripture. See, the ones that's very studied and astute and always in a book. Following his instructions that I just gave you. You would clearly see this and notice. You wouldn't be waiting for a thousand year reign to come way later. We in the midst of this right now, this first resurrection. Verse five, he said, but the rest of the dead live not again until a thousand years were finished. See, the ones that's blessed and holy as he that have part of this first resurrection, they was resurrected from this dead right here, the congregation of the dead. Matter of fact, I want to pivot for a minute. It's a precept came to my mind. Give me one second. I want to see if I can pull it right quick. Hopefully it won't take me too long to pull it. Something that just came in my, my mind. And let me see if I can pull it real fast. One second. See if I can pull it real quick. Okay, um, okay, there it is. Let's go over to, and what brought this up was this verse five. It said, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now, let's go to the book of Revelation. I mean, uh, the book of Proverbs. This precept just dropped in my spirit, and I got to share this. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 16. He says, the man that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. See, he's telling us, blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection, being resurrected from the dead, from deep sleep, from falsities, from the lack of knowledge, you being resurrected from all of those things, into knowledge, into truth, and to understanding. But he said the man that wanted out of the way of the understanding shall remain in a congregation of the dead. In other words, you're going to remain in those churches. You're going to remain in those prison houses. That's what he's telling, telling us about. See, we got to really think about this thing, family. We have to think about these things. Who wants to be in a congregation of the dead where that spirit is not teaching you anything according to his precepts, according to his instructions, that spirit that's behind that pulpit? Proverbs chapter 2 and Verse 18, for her house, that spirit that's behind that pulpit, her house it climbed unto death and her paths unto the dead. 
none that go unto her return again, neither take they hold on the paths of life. This is what he's telling us. He said that thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of the righteous. For the upright shall dwell in the land and the perfect shall remain in it, but the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressors, the ones that's forgetful about his law, the ones that rebellious of his law, they shall be rooted out of it. Now let's go back to where we was at. That just, that just came up in my spirit and I just had to pivot for a moment. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 20. Now let's hit verse seven. He said, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loose out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle. Now, see, we already know who Gog and Magog is, according to Scripture. Is speaking of the sons of Japheth. He said, and to gather them together to battle. Now, you see this colon. It's telling you who they're going to be battling. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Now, once again, for anyone that study scripture, you will clearly know who this is speaking of. The one that is numbered as the sand of the sea is speaking of the house of Israel. He said he's going to multiply Abraham's seed as the sand of the sea. He told us that in Sirach chapter 44. So we see that this this war, this battle, is going on. The scripture is warning us about it, and there's no reason to be surprised at these things. And there's no reason to be surprised when you see things going on in the world, on the news, and different reports that comes out. Shouldn't be surprised, because the scripture it's already warning you these things. We're going to go to Ezekiel chapter 39 and verse 1. It says, Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, Thus said the creator, Yahweh, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I want you to write these names down. The ones that really trying to learn what scripture is telling you. Because the most high, he don't hide anything. It's all there. The problem is a lot of us don't like to follow instructions. We run a Bible study. It's called the Sabbath Bible study every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time for Elder Johnson come on. And in the format of that Bible study, we always start off with the instructions of the Most High God of Israel. A lot of us don't like to follow instructions, and then we figure out, wondering why we can't understand what the Bible is telling us. So write these down. He say, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee. 
crazy. That's some valuable information for someone that want to know. He said, but leave, but the sixth part of thee and will cause thee to come up from the north parts and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel, upon the people of Israel. And we see that this is all set up by the Most High. <clears throat> Excuse me. He said, and I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand and will cause thy arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel. Thou in all thy bands, meaning all thy armies, and the people that is with thee, I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort, and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. Thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken it, said the creator, Yahweh. And I will send a fire on Magog. I want you to write that down. And among them that dwell carefully in the isle. And they shall know that I am the spirit of God. Now, the reason why I had you to write that down, because we're going to go somewhere that we like to call the table of nations. Genesis chapter 10. And Genesis chapter 10 will pretty much represent everyone that's the face of this earth. So we're going to start at verse two, because we're going to get information who this Gog and this Magog is speaking of in this Tubal and Misha. So it says the sons of Japheth, and I really hope a lot of you Hebrew Israelite camps is listening to this teaching because this can be a good lesson for you so you can start teaching lies calling Esau the white man. Because you're not doing nothing but teaching a split tongue doctrine like a serpent like Dan. That Isaiah, I mean, that Genesis chapter 49 was speaking of. We have to do our proper studies. So it said the sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog and Medal and Javan and Tubal and Meshach. We just saw these two in Ezekiel. In Tyrus, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and uh, Rephav, and Torgamar, and the sons of Javan, uh, Lasha, and Tarshish, and Kittim, and Dudium. And it says, by these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families in their nations. So we clearly seeing who these, this Gog and this Magog and this Tubal and Misha, all of these sons right here, we know these are the sons of Japheth. This is who this is. I don't know how in the world that that false doctrine belief system got started about the 12 tribe chart. And I don't know how it got started that Esau was the white man. That's all lies that need to be corrected using precepts. 
Ezekiel chapter 39. Let's go back. In verse 7, it says, So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. And the bones came together. No, I'm sorry, this is the wrong chapter. Ezekiel chapter 39 and verse, and verse 7. Excuse me for that mistake. It says, so will I make my mountain, or so will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. So he said, I'm going to manifest myself in the midst of my people. I'm going to make my holy way known. The law that I put in their heart and that I place in their mind, I'm going to make my way known in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. I'm not going to let them pollute my holy way anymore. And the heathen shall know that I am the spirit of God, the holy one in Israel. So this is spirit of God speaking, the most high. Let's get some more. Baruch chapter four and verse one. It said, this is the book of the commandments of Yahweh and the law that endured forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof that thou mayest be illuminated. So he just told us in Ezekiel 39 and 7, I'm going to go back there for a quick moment. He just told us so will I make my holy name, my holy way known in the midst of the people, in the midst of my people, Israel, and I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know that I am the Spirit of God, the Holy One in Israel. So all of these things he's Make it known. And this is why Root was saying this is the commandments of God and the book of the commandments, and all they keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. It's encouraging these sons of Jacob to take hold of it and walk in the presence of the light thereof. You already seen what was going to befall on you in the last days. In Genesis chapter 49, so he's sending word to you to encourage you and instruct you what you must do. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. It said, let this mind be in you, which was also in the anointed one, salvation. How is shout my sight? who being in the form of Yahweh, thought it not robbery to be equal with Yahweh. He's talking about Christ, the spirit of God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, comparison to a man, because he rested upon the body of Yahweh, as some call Jesus. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, Yahweh also have highly exalted him and given him a name and given him a way which is above every name, which is above every way. That at the name of 
salvation, that at the way of salvation, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that salvation, the anointed one, is the creator to the glory of Yahweh, the Father. So this is speaking about salvation, the anointed one, Christ, which is the spirit of God. Every tongue is going to confess. And every knee is going to bow at the way of salvation. This is what's going to go down. John chapter 14 and verse 6. He says, in salvation said unto him, I am the way the truth and the life. No man coming unto the Father, but by me. This is what we just got to reading in Philippians 2 and 11, at the name, at the way of salvation. Every knee going to bow and every tongue going to confess these things. And he just telling us, Himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no male or female coming unto the Father, but by me you got to come through Christ, which is the Spirit of God, which is salvation, the anointed one, Yahweh Shah the Messiah. This is the way you're going to come through the Spirit of God, Christ. You're not coming through flesh. You're not coming through a man. You're coming through the spirit of God. Joel chapter 2 and verse 27. He says, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the spirit of God your guide, your God meaning your guide and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. He's telling you, ye sons of Jacob, the things that's going to befall on you in the last days. Genesis, I mean, uh, second address, chapter 16 and verse 73. He said, then shall they be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Here, O ye my beloved, said the creator, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh is your guide. God is our God. Yahweh is our guide. The word God means God. He is our God. And the God of them who keep my commandments and precepts, said the creator God. Let not your sins weigh you down. And let not your iniquities lift up themselves. So he's telling us, just as he said in Baruch 4 and 2, that this is the book of the commandments of God and all them who keep it shall come to life. And such as leave it shall die. Now he's telling us, how is our God and the God of them who keep his commandments and precepts. Letting us know we cannot get out of this family. We cannot get out of it. We find ourselves in the falsities, come out of falsities. That's what we must do. Joel chapter two 
in verse 28. He said, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit my word, I'm going to pour my word out. I'm going to pour my spirit out. I'm going to pour wisdom, knowledge, and understanding out. I'm going to pour out the whole armor of God that you'll be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. I'm going to pour my spirit upon all flesh, all flesh of who? Verse 27, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the spirit of God, your guide and none else and my people shall never be ashamed and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy all flesh in the midst of Israel. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And see, the sad part about it, a lot of these prison houses known as churches, they quoted this verse many a times. But what they did, they isolated the verse. You would never see them quote 27 and 28 together. They just quote 28 by itself because all flesh just saying a general statement. But when you precept this, you clearly know that according to and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the spirit of God, your God, and none else. And then you precept this to Psalms 147 and verse 19 and 20. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel, he have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. And praise ye the Lord. We know his judgments is talking about his doctrines and teachings. And then you precept this to Amos chapter three, verse one and two. Hear this word that the spirit of God have spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So when you run these precepts and there's many, many more that I can go to, but I'm just was led to show those for a teachable moment's sake. When you run those, you clearly understand when you read in this verse who he's speaking of. But this is how they'll trip you up and you'll be shaken with a mighty wind, with that mighty spirit. So let's keep going. Verse 29, it says, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. I'm gonna pour out my spirit, my word. This is what I'm gonna do. Upon the servants and upon the handmaids. Leviticus chapter 25 and verse 55. He says, for unto me, the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. I am the spirit of God, your God. This is what he's telling Let's go back and get some more from Ezekiel chapter 39. And we'll go to verse 8. 
He said, behold, remember, it is come and it is done, said the creator, Yeah. This is the day whereof I have spoken. Let's get verse chapter 38, Ezekiel 38, verse 14 down to 19. Therefore, son of man, prophesy, say unto God, thus says the creator God. In that day when my people of Israel dwell it safely, shall thou not know it. And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, and thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses. You come in with all of your doctrines and your beliefs and all of the things that you have been teaching and pushing and evangelizing upon the face of this world in great company and a mighty army, and thou shalt come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land. In other words, he gonna bring you against his people Israel, that the heathen may know me when I shall be sanctified in thee, O God, before their eyes. Thus said the creator, Yahweh, art thou he of whom I have spoken in old time by my servant, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days, many years that I would bring thee against them? And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, said the creator God, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day, there should be a great shaking in the land of Israel. So let's go back to Ezekiel 39 and we're going to hit verse 17 down to 21. He said, and thou son of man, thus said the creator Yahweh, speak unto every feathered fowl. He's doing some spiritual talk now. And to every beast of the field, assemble yourself. And come gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice. He's talking to these people, Gog and Magog. He said, and come gather yourself on every side to my sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you. Even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth. We know this is all spiritual talk. All of the works of the flesh you're going to be learning and teaching and doing. He said, the prince of earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, of bullocks, all of them fatlings of Bashan. You learning all of the works of the flesh, all these evil, wicked deeds and works. Verse 19, he says, and ye shall eat fat till ye be full and drink blood till ye be drunken of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. Thus ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men, and with all men of war, said the creator Yahweh. And I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand 
that I have laid upon them. Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 20 down to 23. He says, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of heaven, this spiritual talk, talking about people, and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountain shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, said the creator, Yahweh. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. And I will plead against him with pestilence, with blood. And I will rain upon him and upon his bands. We know this is all spiritual talk. And upon the many people that are with him and overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself and I will be known in the eyes and the understanding of many nations and they shall know that I am the spirit of God. Zephaniah chapter one, and we start at verse two down to verse 12. He said, I will utterly consume all things from off the land, said the spirit of God. I will consume men and beasts. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. And I will cut off men from off the land, said the spirit of God. I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place. All of the ones of the house of Israel that continue to worship in the prison house. All the ones that continue to stay in the way of no understanding in the congregation of the dead. All the ones that continue to follow the ancient and the honorable and his prophets that caused them to err. Matter of fact, let me pull that verse right quick and I'll come back. Let's hit Isaiah chapter nine and verse 15. Let's make sure everybody got a clear understanding of what he's saying. He said, the ancient and honorable, which is Satan, he is the head and the prophet that teacher lies he is the tale. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. So now, you go back to Zephaniah, we should clearly understand what he's saying. Verse 4, O sons of Jacob, he say, I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, all of the 12 tribes of Israel that's living according to the flesh, and I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place. And the name, the way of the cherubims with the priests, all these false gods and idols. This is what he's going to do. And them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops. And them that worship and that swear by the spirit of God and that swear by Malchus. And them that are turned back from the spirit of God and those that have not sought the spirit of God nor inquired of him. All of them. He said, hold our peace at the presence 
of the creator, Yahweh. For the day of the spirit of God is at hand. For the spirit of God have prepared a sacrifice. He have bid his guests. And it shall come to pass in the day of the spirit of God's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. See, that strange apparel that he's speaking of is the ones that's yoked up with the strange woman. I did a teaching a while back. One was speaking about the virtuous woman. And the other one asked the question, are you yoked up with the strange woman? If you had not seen that teaching, you might want to go back and check it out because this is what it's speaking about and such as are clothed with strange apparel. So your covering, it should be Christ. It's supposed to be the spirit of God, but no, you want to have your covering the ancient and honorable, that strange woman spirit. It says, in the same day also will I punish all those that leap on the threshold, which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. And it shall come to pass in that day, said the spirit of God, that there should be the noise of a cry from the fish gate and in howling from the second and the great crashing from the hills. How ye inhabitants of Mactish, for all the merchant people are cut down all day that bear silver are cut off and it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles mm, and punish the men that are settled on their leaves that say in their heart, the spirit of God will not do good, neither will he do evil. See, you got a lot of folks that believe this way. A lot of folks that don't believe in God, period. They believe that they're God. They're their own gods and they get make their own decision. He say he gonna search out Jerusalem with candles. And all the ones that he see that's not worthy to enter in his kingdom, he gonna punish the men that settle on their leaves on their own understanding. They're going to go with their own way. He's going to punish them. Follow after their own God. He's going to punish them. Psalms chapter 96 and verse 3. It says, declare his glory among the heathen. Nope, matter of fact, nope, I need to go another location. Getting ahead of myself. Let's go back to Zephaniah and we're going to hit chapter two this time. Start at verse one. Zephaniah two and one, one down to verse 13. It says, Gather yourselves together. Yeah, gather together, O nation, not desire. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Spirit of God come upon you, before the day of the Spirit of God's anger come upon you, seek ye the Spirit of God, all ye meek of the earth, which have Rot his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in a day of the spirit of God's anger. See, he giving you all of the keys. He giving you all of the warning. He's sending you 
pastors that will feed you with knowledge and understanding so you can rightfully divide the word of truth so you can make the proper adjustments in your life. He says, seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the spirit of God's anger. Because it's coming, family. It's definitely coming. For Gaza shall be forsaken. In Ashkelon, a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday. And Ekron shall be rooted up. Woe unto the inhabitants of the seacoast the nation of the Cherethites. The word of the spirit of God is against you. O Canaan, the land of the Philistines, I will even destroy thee that there shall be no inhabitant. And the sea coast shall be dwellings and cottages for shepherds and foes for flocks. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. They shall feed thereupon. And the houses of Ashkelon shall lie down in the evening. For the spirit of God, their God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. I have heard the reproach of Moab and the rivalings of the children of Adam, whereby they have reproached my people and magnified themselves against their brother, their border. Therefore, as I live, said the spirit of God of hosts, the God of Israel, surely Moab shall be as Sodom and the children of Ammon as Gamar, uh, even the breeding of nettles, and salt pits, and a perpetual desolation. The residue of my people shall spoil them, and the remnant of my people shall possess them. This shall they have for their pride, because they have reproached and magnified themselves against the people of the Spirit of God of hosts. The Spirit of God will be terrible unto them, for he will famish all the gods of the earth. See, keep in mind, all of the God is all of these different gods of the earth. The question is, which God are you worshiping? Which God are you praying to? Which God are you following? He said he going to famish all the gods of the earth and men shall worship him every one from his place, even all the isles of the heathen. So he said, all men on the face of the earth, they gonna know what time it is. He gonna famish all the gods of the earth and all men shall worship him, spirit of God. Everyone from his place, even all the isles of the heathen, heathen going to even worship. Ye Ethiopians also, ye shall be slain by my word. And he will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria and will make Nineveh a desolation and dry like a wilderness. Everyone that had their own sense of reasoning and their own understanding, he's going he to come against and destroy all of that. So this is what's going to go on. All of these gods of the earth, he's going to famish them. So now let's go to Psalms 96. And we're going to read... Uh, Verse three down to five. He says, declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the spirit of God is great and greatly to be praised. 
He is to be feared above all gods. He just got through showing us that he's going to famish all the gods of the earth. He said, for all the gods of the nations are idols. All of the gods of the earth are idols. They are devils. But the spirit of God made the heaven. So he's telling us, family, all of these other gods and all of these different belief systems and all of these different doctrines, he's going to destroy at a appointed time. Tobit chapter 13 and verse 2 down to 15. He says, for he do scourge and have mercy. He lead it down to hell and bring it up again. Neither is there any that can avoid his hand. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel. In other words, you confess the name of the spirit of God. You confess his ways. You sing praises unto him, meaning you confess it and tell him, how he brought you out of darkness into this marvelous light, how he have resurrected you from the congregation of the dead out of those prison houses have he redeemed you and brought you to the knowledge of truth where you fallen and obeying his word and you coming back into covenant with him. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he have scattered us among you. Declare his greatness and install him before all the living. For he is our creator and he is the God of our father forever. And he will scourge us for our iniquities and will have mercy again and will gather us out of all nations among whom he has scattered us. If ye turn to him with your whole heart and with your whole mind and deal uprightly before him, then will he turn unto you and will not hide his face from you. Therefore, see what he will do with you and confess him with your whole mouth and praise the creator of might and install the everlasting king. In the land of my captivity do I praise him and declare his might and majesty to a sinful nation. O ye sinners, turn and do justice before him. Who can tell if he will accept you and have mercy on you? I will install my God and my soul shall praise the King of heaven and shall rejoice in his greatness. Let all men speak and let all men praise him for his righteousness. He's speaking about all men. He said, O Jerusalem, the holy city, he will scourge thee for thy children's works and will have mercy again on the sons of the righteous. Give praise to the creator for he is good and praise the everlasting king that his tabernacle, his sanctuary, his word, the whole armor of Yahweh may be builded in thee again with joy and let him make joyful there in thee those that are captives in love in thee forever those that are miserable. Many nations shall come from far to the name, to the way of the creator, Yahweh, with gifts in their hands, in their power. Even gifts to the king of heaven. All generations shall praise thee. 
with great joy. This is what's going to go down. He says, curse are all day which hate thee. So I got news for the ones that have hate in their heart. Calling his people all kind of names and doing them all kind of way. He says, curse are all day which hate thee. Some are even your own people. But look here what he's saying. He's saying, bless shall all be which love thee forever. He put this in scripture. It's clear. Who all have eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart to understand. He, he, he put it here for a reason. Just as we're being proved and tested, you have others that's being proved and tested as well. Curse are all they which hate thee, and blessed shall all be which love thee forever. Rejoice and be glad for the children of the just. For they shall be gathered together and shall bless the creator of the just. Oh, bless are they which love thee. For they shall rejoice in thy peace. Being crystal clear. Bless are they which have been sorrowful for all thy scourges. For they shall rejoice for thee when they have seen all that glory and shall be glad forever. Let my soul bless Yahweh, the great king. See, he said a whole lot of information right there. The sad part about it is it's going to go over a lot of folks' heads. But if you would only hearken to the word of God, you will have a reward. Ezekiel chapter 39 and verse 22. He says, so the house of Israel shall know that I am the spirit of God, their God from that day and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword, according to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions have I done unto them and hid my face from them. Therefore thus said the creator God, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the, house, the whole house of Israel and will be jealous for my holy name. After that, they have borne their shame and all their trespasses, whereby they have trespassed against me. When they dwelt safely in their land and none made them afraid. When I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemy's land and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, many people, then shall they know that I am the spirit of God, their God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen but I have gathered them unto their own land 
their own nation and have left none of them any more there. Neither will I hide my face any more from them. For I have poured out my spirit, I have poured out my word, I have poured out the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, I have poured out the whole armor of God so you'll be able to withstand the wiles of the devil upon the house of Israel, said the creator God. This is what he have done. Let's get some more. Let's go to Tobit. We're going to hit chapter 13 and verse 16. For Jerusalem shall be built up with sapphires and emeralds and precious stones. Thy walls and towers and battlements with pure gold. So in other words, you're going to build, build up with the spirit of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. This is what we're going to be built up with. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. He said in verse 17, in the streets of Israel, the streets of Jerusalem shall be paved with beryl and carbuncle and stones of Ophel. And all her streets shall say, Hallelujah. And they shall praise him, saying, Blessed be Yahweh, which have installed it forever. So this is what's going to go on. Let's go to Revelation chapter 20. In verse 11, he said, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. They just fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, Stand before Yahweh. And the books were open. See, that's the one that you don't want to be in the books. Because this means if you was in the books, you was living your life according to the works of the flesh. And since we're here, I might as well go ahead and show this understanding. Over here in Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, our adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath strife, seditions, heresies, immunes, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. See, all of these are books. He said, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. These are the books that he's speaking of. Let's go back. So he said, the books were open 
And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death in hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now family, I want you to pay close attention what he just said. He said, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. But when you come up here to verse six, he said, bless and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power. This lake of fire have no power power against the ones that have been a part of this first resurrection coming to the knowledge of this truth this is why it's so important family he said in verse 15 and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire Daniel chapter 12 in verse three, uh, one through three. He said, and at the time shall, at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, that people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Ephesians chapter six, verse 13 through 20. He says, wherefore I take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand an evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the, prepar the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Yahweh. Praying always with all manner and supplication in the spirit and watching there too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, meaning of the message, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Psalms 23. one through six. 
The spirit of God is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters where all of this knowledge is. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake, for his way's sake. He has re resurrected me from the congregation of the dead where there's no understanding. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil in this wilderness, in this city called Babylon. For thou art with me, thy rod, thy word, thy stab, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou art known as my head with all my cup running over with the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the spirit of God forever. Ecclesiastes. Chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man, meaning male and female. Whole duty, duty of Adam. For Yahweh shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So family, I hope and pray that something was said to help you on this journey. For blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. I hope that these caps was able to clearly see that the 12 tribe charter is not correct, it's false. And that Esau is not who they think who Esau is. We clearly saw in Genesis chapter 10 who the sons of Japheth are, and he even said he was going to save back a six-part remnant. He even showed that curse are they that hate thee, and bless are those that love thee. Some folks just can't get hate out of their heart. There is a place where the ones, according to their heart and what's in their heart, and love his people, most high have a place in scripture and it's been shown before on the teaching that I'll refer you back to the teaching that Elder Johnson did on the three sons of Noah. There is a place for those according to their heart and works and deeds that Love the people of God and don't hate the people of God. They have a place for them. So 
So family, it's my prayer that everyone be able to receive something from this teaching. And even as I get ready to close, <clears throat> I'm being led to show this one last scripture. And then we're going to go out. I'm going to do it as a combo. Verse uh, Revelations chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, it says, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. An angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of Yahweh, the people of Yahweh. And the altar and them that worship therein. Verse two, but the court which is with out the temple, leave out. Ones that's without the covenant, leave out. And measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles. In the holy city shall they tread on the foot forty in two months. So, family, with that information there, I'm going to stop, and I'll refer you back to the teaching that Elder Johnson did on the three sons of Noah, Shem. Ham and Japheth. I hope everyone have a wonderful Sabbath. Keep studying, keep learning, and most of all, follow Christ. I'm going to say a shalom to everyone until we meet again. Shalom.